Ever since my brother died, my mom is sober like two hours in the morning when she wakes up. Rest of the day is a fucking shit show. The game ain't find you. See, where I'm from, that shit comes straight to your front door, but you made a choice. My parents. Let's just say they leave me alone and I leave them alone. You're not off the hook, little orphan Annie. You fuck up. These fools here die. There's a lot of fucked up shit happened in my house growing up. You are a monster, Tariq. We both are. Welcome back, Top Notch Gang, to another video. And in this one, we're going to be diving into Effie, as you can see, talking about everything we know about her secret past, backstory, and everything like that, and how all that led to her making the decisions she did that we've seen over the course of season six of OG Power, and of course, all the way up to season three of Power Book Ghost. Because in the Power Universe, everyone starts somewhere, everyone has their mentors that put them into the game teach him about that life whether it's Kanan and raising Kanan learning from Rock or even Ronnie or both of his uncles even going on to mentor people like Ghost, Tommy and of course Tariq or even Kane someone else who grew up into this life with Monet and Lorenzo both parents already being into it and it's the same for Effie whether she learned how to cut her first brick whether she learned how to fight where did she figure out that she can only look out for number one I'm gonna put all that into perspective for you guys in this video and with all that being said we're gonna see how this carries over into season four the final season how all these things about her might come full circle finally be revealed and how her story truly ends will it be a catastrophic downfall will she make it out like she always wanted we're just gonna dive into all the clues details of everything so as usual you guys can leave a like comment subscribe and let's go ahead and get right into it for starters of course we got to mention all the information we know about her backstory everything we learned since she first appeared in power so we know of course she grew up with her mom and brother her brother of course died in a robbery going wrong and her mother she's been a drunk ever since been hard to take care of and that's how she first got into the game had to fend for herself we learn all this at Cho with her and Tariq and this is how they eventually start to find because of course we know Tariq also lost Freyna so they bond grow through this share a product and sell on Cho together but of course she becomes an opportunist and she takes this chance to burn Tariq and take the whole operation for herself in one of the scenes we specifically see her texting an unknown plug or something like that basically saying Tariq is the competition she thinks he's running out she's gonna keep an eye on him and of course we know she eventually ends up writing him out and getting him kicked out of school we're gonna get more to her plug later on but back to F this is the first thing we learn about her background with her mother and brother and also the first time we see her look out for number one personality trait that both Braden and Tariq see time and time again and both even agree with later on in season three. Now Effie got arrested and you know her, she only cares about number one. Yeah, that's why we need to be careful with our next move. After Cho, we wouldn't see our girl again until book goes when Tariq needs her help to move product. He talked to Tasha on the phone. She basically told him, use her for what you got to do. So they're selling product and she also gets into this love square, I guess, between Tariq, Diana, Lauren and her herself she doesn't give a fuck makes lauren mad that she was hilarious but then we start to pick up more details about her backstory based off her conversations with Tariq and brayden and one particular conversation with Tariq, Tariq talking about his mom's trial why he's keeping her at arm's length also not trusting her and she just basically straight up tells him that he is a monster act like it and she is she is one as well you are a monster Tariq. we both are that's just the way they grew up, I guess. And then it goes further as in season two of Book Ghost, she's having a conversation with Braden after Kane already told Braden he needs to off Lauren. Tariq is trying to send Lauren out of town. Effie doesn't want that to happen. Once again, looking out for number one, save herself. And also she gets to be with Tariq in the long run. So she tells Braden he needs to make a decision. He chose the game. The game didn't choose him and say where she is from, it came knocking at her door. The game ain't find you. See, where I'm from, that shit comes straight to your front door, but you made a choice. So this was always the thing she was going to have to do in her mind to get where she wanted to be in life. It's more of a means to an end. And she's letting Brayden know you want to be a part of it. 
you gotta do all the things that come with it. Something else we see Tariq tell Breed and also in season three. Listen, bro, you chose to live this life, now live by the fucking rules one time. Here we go, Please, here bro. we go with that one foot in, one foot out So bullshit. what the fuck is it? So this shows the like-mindedness of uh, Tariq and Effie, the decisions they choose to make and how they go about their everyday life based off how they were raised. Man, but you gotta do what you gotta do for now, right? I always do. If anyone gets it, I don't know. I know how that shit feels. We then continue to learn more about Effie as the show goes on and it's one scene in particular, the classroom scene that really showcases how her life turned out and how much she had to do to get where she wanted, where we see her end up in the back of the classroom, taking multiple steps back, not having a two parent household, needing loans and assistance and all types of things, being sexually assaulted, which we're going to get into next. So this puts into perspective all the things we are learning about her and helps shape the decisions she chooses to make why she's so what people would call or deem as selfish or why she betrays Tariq or Braden or everyone to get where she wants to be because she feels that no one is really looking out for her or has her best interest and that she had to start from the very back so when we get more bits and pieces of her backstory of course telling Diana that her parents leave her alone she leaves them alone my parents Let's just say they leave me alone and I leave them alone. That puts into perspective how much she just doesn't fuck with her mom. I mentioned earlier how her mom was drunk. We also get scenes where she talked about being sexually assaulted by her mom's partners. My mom always had a different guy in my own and one of them liked to touch me. What? And also, of course, scenes of Obi calling her little orphan Andy. You're not off the hook, little orphan Annie. You fuck up. These fools here. Die. He has no one she loved that they could go after if everything goes wrong. So he just threatened to kill Tariq, Braden, and Kane. And it also helps us understand her decision making, why she went and took out Lauren. Yes, it was to be with Tariq, but also to protect her future. Just like Tariq or Ghost or everyone else says all the time, to protect their future. It's why she turned Tariq in at the end with Noma, telling her that Tariq knew about her daughter, Anya Covington, to protect her future to make sure she has a distro she could get product that she's able to sell because she was left in the wind when Tariq got out of jail she had nothing so this was her only opportunity as I mentioned earlier she's the biggest opportunist so now that I have fully broken down her backstory and how it influenced all the decisions she decided to make throughout season six of OG power and the first three seasons of book ghost I think now we're able to go into season four predict her movements what else we're gonna see and how her back story possibly comes into effect or comes around full circle so now let's dive into her and her season four storylines now for starters i mentioned earlier in the video that at cho we saw effie texting her plug telling him about Tariq, him being a competition keeping an eye on him and now i think that's finally about to come back full circle now of course we did get a scene of effie telling Tariq that her plug basically went ghost on her stopped texting her back and she doesn't really know anything about them anymore but now we get this scene in the teaser trailer of Effie and Kane in this little shady spot. And there's this guy right there. He just looks like trouble. Not to necessarily say he's the plug, probably a henchman, someone who works for him or something like that. But I think they're going to have to pull all their resources together to kill Tariq to get their product off. And she's going to go back to her old plug and try to be able to sell to him. Because think about it like this. Most of the reason it was able to even compete and do what Noma was asking of them is due to Tariq and Braden and their hand in the Western Holdings. Now with that going down and of course with them being on the opposite side of the war, that's not really possible. So they still gotta get off the guns that Noma brings into them and they also gotta get off the product and I just don't think they have enough resources at this time and Effie is not gonna have no choice but to go back to her old stumping ground. I also think it makes sense to reconnect with this plug in the possibility that Noma gets taken out in the end once again Effie is someone who always needs a spell save something to fall back on to go to and I think this scene is hinting towards or showcasing that that she's going to be back in her old stomping grounds rekindling relationships and bonds so that in the instance that everything falls apart that they don't win this war that she has something 
to go back to next point of interest we have to look out for is obviously going to be her relationship with Tariq. she has now burned him three separate times of course first snitching on him at cho then him revealing the information about lauren her going behind his back giving it to kane and then taking matters into her own hand and, and taking out lauren and then of course at the end of season three alerting noma about the iron Covington situation so i think they could possibly work again but obviously Tariq could never ever trust her i think he be able to utilize her and her feelings for him to possibly win the war or at least take out one of the Tahadas or one of the people in it just like he used her when Tasha told him to to sell drugs on campus when he was first keeping her at arm's length I think he's able to replicate that because her feelings for him still were real in comparison to her and Kane who we saw her dub him and kick him out the little interrogation room they didn't really want to talk with him but when she was in there with Davis McLean she was about to ask about Tariq so I do think she does care about him a lot but Tariq is never going to trust her again, obviously. And I think there's always the possibility of her dying. This is the last and final season. We know a lot of pieces are going to be taken off the chessboard. And I think it's been a minute since a woman character or a main say character, like a woman got knocked off probably since like Lakeisha and Angela. You guys could correct me down below if I'm wrong, but it doesn't happen too often. So I wouldn't be surprised if she was that character. Something else that I have to mention that I don't think there's gonna happen i'll say that now but i just dropped a video about diana the possibility of her getting pregnant in this last and final season and i talked about in a video a year ago when he was in this love square with of course lauren diana and effie that he was possibly going to get one of them pregnant and it was going to end up in a angela tasha situation now, i always thought it was going to be diana that's why i made that video but a lot of people pointed out that of course she slept with Tariq and kane so it's a possibility for effie to be in this situation now i still lean towards diana obviously it creates the most conflict in my opinion with diana Diana having to choose a side between her family and her baby daddy of course you guys wanted me to mention this so I was throwing it out there I don't think Effie is the type to keep a baby anyway but once again just throwing it out there overall that's it for this video on Effie her backstory dark secrets and how everything could possibly come full circle what influenced all the decisions she made how her story could possibly end you can give your own thoughts predictions for her character down below in the comments let me know how you think her story ends remember this is the last and final season so we're expecting a lot to take place also if you like this one I did one on Diana and her pregnancy as I just mentioned prior I also talked about Kane and his own video how he's going to be crashing out in this upcoming season and even one on Tariq his master plan to get out this war and get out this game once and for all so you go ahead and check out all those videos and let me know any more you want to see I also expect the full season trailer to drop probably within like the next two to three weeks of course I'm going to be doing a breakdown on that but you could put down below any other characters you want to see me do a prediction on as well as usual leave a like comment subscribe though and I'm out.